Hello, I'm Joel Kramer, and um, I'm an archaeology student here in Israel. How are you so crazy about me? You gave your life to set me free. By your grace that I had never known, I am saved, my life is yours alone. Ba -da 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 -da. thing that's found here is Byzantine remains and so you see uh, these mosaic floors and uh, this building that you see is a later building but uh, there was a church here and this is important because an inscription was found here from the Byzantine period that names the site Shiloh okay and so what does that mean well it means that in uh, the 4th century, 5th century AD that this site was understood to be Shiloh at that time period and that's why the church is here and commemorating the place. And this is the Acropolis and then once we get up on top of the hill up here we'll look down on this flat area down here which is where uh, the evidence points to as far as where the tabernacle was. So get a look uh, the tabernacle, get that kind of in your mind, and then picture that when we're looking down on this flat area. Things that I think are at this site is this right here. Look at, it's in uh, reuse, but if you look in there, you'll see a, a bull's head. I want to talk about uh, the agriculture just for a moment before we move on, but if you look out here, you'll see the vineyards. See those? That's because the Jews are living here and therefore they drink wine and sell wine and we have vineyards. Um, that is significant to the biblical story because we have one of the stories uh, that has to do with Shiloh has to do with vineyards. And that is that if you'll remember we went by Gibeah of Saul. By the way, you see this bird? Oh, never mind. It stopped doing it just when I said it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Okay, so we went by Gibeah of Saul, and you'll remember in the Judges period, we have the story of the man who comes through, stays at Gibeah of Saul with his concubine, and, uh, and she is horribly raped and dies, and um, they take her, he takes her and cuts her up into pieces and sends her to the 12 tribes of Israel to come together, to our 11 tribes of Israel, to come together and uh, for war against Benjamin. You know what story I'm talking about? Okay, so it's a long story, but anyways, eventually the 11 tribes defeat Benjamin and they wipe him out down to, I, I think it's like 700 men or something like that, and they don't have any wives for those men because they've taken a vow not to give them wives. So it looks like one of the tribes of Israel is going to disappear and become extinct. And it is a big deal in the story to lose one tribe of the 12 tribes, much less 10 tribes. Again, as we talked about, they weren't lost. They were preserved within the walls of Jerusalem. So, uh, so this tribe, um, so what, what do they do? They got to get these wives for the Benjamites. So they say, well, there's a festival going on up at Shiloh. And uh, the women are out dancing in the vineyard and they send the men of Benjamin in there and they run in there and they scoop themselves up a wife and uh, that takes care of about half of them. Um, you were up at Bet Shan. Did you stop at Bet Shan? Across the river, the Jordan on the east side is a place called uh, Pella over there, which is where the Christians ran. But um, near there is also uh, another uh, town called Jabesh Gilead. And uh, so the other thing, we still don't have enough wives for the men of Benjamin. What are we going to do? Well, who didn't show up to the battle? Ah, Jabesh Gilead didn't show up. So they went over to Jabesh Gilead. They killed all the men. They took the wives and they gave the women. They gave them to uh, the tribe of Benjamin. And so basically, Benjamin at that point marries into Jabesh Gilead, which then plays into the story when uh, 
Saul and, and his sons are put on the wall at Beth Shan after they're killed on Mount Gilboa, then the men of Jabesh Gilead are the ones who come over and give them proper burial. Why? Because they're related to them um, from that incident. Also, this is just depicting, you can see the, the crusher down here for olives, and this was a place where they made uh, olive oil from olives. So the first thing they did is they crushed them, and then they take those crushed uh, olives and they put them in these bags and then they apply weight, a beam across here, and then they attach rocks to them and they put pressure on and as they put pressure on, the oil comes out and, uh, and then they collect it in jars. Now the reason this is interesting is uh, the Garden of Gethsemane. Have you been to the Garden of Gethsemane yet? Okay. Well that's where Jesus went to pray and that Gethsemane means oil press. So where they were at was one of these which is very interesting because Jesus is really going through a spiritual hard time there where uh, he, he, right before him is the crucifixion and the spiritual uh, torture and torment that he's going through in, uh, in, in taking our sin on him and being separated from his father for that time is much more painful <laughs> than anything else and so it talks about him praying there and it talks about that he's under such stress that he's bleeding from his pores well he's at a oil press and that's exactly how you make oil from an olive you got to get the inside the the oil out of the pores of that uh of that olive in order to have your oil and i don't think that it's a coincidence that description of the tremendous pressure that Jesus is under spiritually at the olive press and this description of um, him bleeding from his pores. Okay, so the most significant thing about Shiloh is uh, that it was the Jerusalem before Jerusalem. It was the place where the tabernacle was for almost 400 years. So the question is on this site is where would the tabernacle be? And you can see the houses and everything that are up on this main Acropolis hill. And uh, then you look down here and you see this natural saddle over here, which uh, is been being excavated currently, but has also had some uh, excavation exploration in the past as well. And what's been found here is that this is already a naturally flat area, but um, but the evidence has been found to show that the bedrock down there has been cut away on both sides to make this area larger from a north and south point of view. And then also that retaining walls were put in on either side that they could be filled up so that the flat area could be extended to the east and the west. In other words, it was already a flat area, but it has been manipulated by people to make it even bigger and then there's nothing built on top of it. There's this like this wall that you see down cutting in the middle of it is later and so on and so forth. So why would you make a flat area in your area where you don't have anything built on top of it? Well we could sit around and speculate all day or we could just turn to the ancient text and that gives us the answer. It's because there was a tent there for almost 400 years. So, yes, yeah, so this is where the story of Hannah takes place and where she brings uh, Samuel. This is where Samuel is raised. And uh, this is where Eli the priest dies when he gets word that the Ark of the Co well, that his sons were killed um, with a battle with the Philistines and that they captured the Ark. And when he hears this, then he falls over and dies. You can see this bedrock on this side that's been cut back. You got bedrock on the other side that's been cut back. You've got these strange things. Look, come look over uh, here. Like right here. You got another one here. Another one here. Another one here. You see what I'm talking about? Well, I mean, they're, they're not in a perfect line or anything like that, but that's, uh, 
that's one interpretation that they were used somehow for the structure they're interesting and they've just excavated over on the other side they're on that side as well These they were holes. the first stakes yeah these are the holes that you're yeah, you can see them all through here on this side and on the other side, especially where they've been digging over on this corner over here. They, uh, they have found these. Picture so that uh, you will read in your Bibles about uh, Shiloh. Shiloh is then used as an example. Don't become like Shiloh. Uh, you know, that was destroyed. And then, um, then the ark was... Uh, with the Philistines for a short time, then it was at Bet Shemesh, then it was at uh, Kiryat Jerim, and then it uh, went up to Jerusalem. As far as what a site is known for in the Bible, and then what it's known for archaeology wise, if you just pick one thing per site, you can always find one. So Jericho is the fallen wall, Shechem is the fortress temple with the stone in front of it that's burned. Um, Samaria is the uh, palace that's inlaid with ivory. Shiloh, we would expect from the biblical account, what, it's, what is Shiloh the most famous for? It's where the tabernacle was for almost 400 years. When you look at the site and where a tabernacle the size of the biblical proportions could be, this becomes obvious. And you don't find in this area houses, like see all the houses and all the construction all over the hill? You don't find that over here. So, um, again, that's what she was talking about when the Bible one-on-one -on -one matches with the uh, archaeology. Uh, your one thing here is a place for a, tab a tabernacle.